Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Taggart with the Kirkland Institute for Health, where we specialize in chronic illness. I'm a board-certified chiropractic physician with over 19 years clinical experience. I have advanced training in functional endocrinology, functional neurology, and functional immunology. I also have board certifications in blood chemistry analysis and also nutritional therapy. I want to welcome you to our autoimmune DVD. If you are watching this presentation, either you or somebody you care about is suffering from an autoimmune condition. Or you may think you have an autoimmune condition, but it has not been diagnosed because you've been to many, many doctors without any improvement. So in the next 30 minutes, what I want to do is explain to you why you developed your condition and what we can do to balance your immune system without the use of medication. So in this presentation, I'll be going over a lot of key concepts. You may want to watch this DVD more than once because the, the concepts are probably new to you. Most of information I'll be sharing with you, 90% of you have never heard before. Now before I get into the presentation, there's a website that I'd like to, you, to um, direct you to. It is www.lifechangingcare.com and in this website what it does is it talks about how we can help people who have chronic health disorders by addressing their pro problems neurologically and also metabolically. There are now over 1,200 video testimonials of people just like you who have been to doctor after doctor and were not getting better. And they were told by many doctors that they could not improve and they would just go home and have to live with it. Well, in our office, we've proved that that just isn't true. So when we combine neurologic and metabolic, comprehensive metabolic testing, there's almost no condition that we can't improve. So I'd like you to spend some time on that website and listen to some of these testimonials. If you have an autoimmune condition, what that means is that your immune system is basically turned on you and it's actually attacking your own tissue, which is a, obviously a really bad thing. All autoimmune conditions cause tissue destruction and that's going to give you your symptoms. Now, some named autoimmune conditions are rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is when you have joint pain typically in the hands and feet. Sorgren syndrome, if the immune system attacks your mucous glands. Lupus attacks the skins and the joints and the kidneys. Scleroderma attacks the connective tissue. Hashimoto's is autoimmune thyroid, which can give you a chronically low thyroid. Actually, it is the most common cause of a chronically low thyroid. Also, sometimes you can have high thyroid symptoms when you have Hashimoto's. Graves' disease is high thyroid. That's also caused by autoimmune. Celiac is when your immune system attacks your digestive system and it's typically triggered by a gluten intolerance. Addison's, your immune system attacks your adrenal gland. Pernicious anemia is when your immune system attacks the lining of your stomach and you're unable to absorb B12 so you become anemic. Myasthenia gravis, the neuromuscular junction is affected. Dermomatomyositis, your skin and muscles are affected. Renaud syndrome. Your immune system attacks your circulatory system and your joints, so you, your hands, you get pain in your hands and feet, cold hands and feet, and your hands, when exposed to cold, may turn blue, white, or red. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune, attacks the pancreas, and there are all other autoimmune conditions which don't have any specific label on them, but you still may be suffering from tissue destruction. There are several factors that would increase the probability that you have an autoimmune condition if you've not been diagnosed. One would be that you've been to many doctors, both medical and natural, with little improvement in your condition. Second would be is that you've taken lots of supplements and supplements you've been given by doctors that they tell you that they'll make you feel better, actually make you feel worse. And third is that you have stacks and stacks of paperwork and lab tests that you've accumulated over the years. Now the reason that our program is going to be successful when all those other doctors have failed is we're not going to focus just on your symptom and the label you've been given. We're going to look at and test all the different systems of the body that all affect the immune system and we're going to also test the immune system specifically. Now a good example of why the symptomatic approach doesn't work it would be in the example of rheumatoid arthritis. A lot of people who have rheumatoid arthritis have joint pain especially in their hands. The medication does help with the pain, but as soon as they discontinue the medication, the pain just comes back. So if we focus strictly on your symptoms, we're going to feel like all the other doctors. So what we're going to do is we're going to specifically look at your immune system, which is the cause. There are basically five different 
ways that we are going to look at the immune system and specifically test it to find out why your immune system is attacking your own body. The first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at certain triggers that actually cause your immune system to, to basically start attacking your own tissue. There's specific tests that we can do to find out that's happening. We're also going to look very specifically at your digestive system. 70% of your immune system is in your gut. So if you have issues with your digestive system, you're not going to improve your condition. The next thing we need to look at is we need to look at all the other factors such as blood sugar, adrenal gland function, other systems in the body that influence the immune system. We also have to look at and find out if there is a dominance in the immune system of one side or the other and then we need to do give you certain products that will help your immune system balance itself. So if we can do those things then we're going to have great success in helping you turn your condition around. So a lot of people come into my office and they say, well, I've had all these tests done and the doctors say, well, all my tests are normal. So the first thing I would say about that is that how can all the tests be normal if you feel so bad? So there's something being missed. And one of the big issues is there's a huge difference between laboratory normals and functional normals. Laboratory normals are based on the averages of all people who have been to the lab in the last year. So there's a lot of data from really sick people. So how can you determine what optimal function health is based on data from sick people. So we have to use a much tighter range. We use what's called the functional range, which is set by the National Endocrine Society. And it's going to find things that those other laboratory ranges are way too broad and they miss. So that, that's a really, really important um, criteria. And that's definitely something you should um, write down if you're making some notes. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to do what's called sensitivity testing or food sensitivity testing. One of the big triggers that will cause your autoimmune mechanism to go into hyper, hyper mode is food allergies. And so we have specific testing that we do to find out if you become sensitive to different foods that you eat. This is very common in chronic illness. We find it all the time. So the big the big um, offenders are gluten or wheat, rye, oats, barley, milk, eggs, yeast, or in soy. Now, if you are sensitive to these foods, every time you eat them, your body is going to create inflammation in your gut. That's going to whip up your immune system, and the immune system is going to start going after other things, and that's going to be a big precursor to you having autoimmune condition. Now, if you, are, if you have food sensitivities, that can cause a lot of symptoms. It can cause chronic pain, it can make you tired, it can cause you to have bowel problems, indigestion, you can get ulcers of the mouth, you may feel bloated after you eat, and also you may have uh, frequent loose bowel movements. The next test that we need to do is we need to check your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are very important for overall energy, they affect blood sugar, they're, they're small glands that sit on top of the kidney, and they're very much involved with the immune system. So. To test your uh, adrenal system, we do a saliva-based test. And what this does is it tells us what kind of hormones your adrenal gland is making and also there is a rhythm to your um, output of your adrenal glands. It's going to tell us what your cortisol level is and also what, what the rhythm of your cortisol level is. Also will let us know what your DHEA level is, which will, in a male will end up having you make testosterone. In females, it's going to make estrogen. So, Here's what a sample test actually looks like. So what we do is we take samples in your saliva and that's going to let us know what's going on with your adrenal gland throughout the day. In the morning, your adrenal gland should have a high cortisol output. And as you can see in the sh this shaded area here, this is, where, this is the normal rhythm of the adrenal gland output. So it should be high in the morning because cortisol is stimulatory. And then as the day goes on, it should decrease to the point where at night it's going to be low because cortisol is stimulatory. You don't want high cortisol at night because if you have that, you're not going to sleep. Now you can see in this, in this line here that this patient that we tested had low cortisol in the morning. Instead of having energy in the morning, she was tired. And then as the day went on, her cortisol level started to raise. And as a result of that, she could not go to sleep. So this is a very important test. Almost all of my chronic health patients have adrenal gland problems. And so this is a very important test to do to find out what's going on there. Now, if this 
pattern is abnormal, we have to find out what's causing it to be abnormal and there's different protocols nutritionally that we can use to help balance out this curve. It's going to help your immune system better, it's going to help you have more energy. What we need to do is we need to specifically test your immune system. In your immune system there's basically three main systems. You have what's called Th1 and you have Th2. Th1 are the white blood cells that are going to attack invaders. Like if you have an infection, the Th1 systems are going to, those cells are going to go after things to kill it because that's a, a threat to your health and the, the, that system is very aggressively going to go after those things so you can get better, so you can stay infection free. Now you also have your Th2 system and those are the, the white blood cells that are called B cells and what they do is they put an antibody tag or a target on different things that are bad that your body needs to get rid of so these guys can find it. There are different infections and different problems that your immune system has a hard time finding so Th2 system will put a tag on it so that the Th1 can find it and kill it. Now you also have the Th3 system which tends to balance Th1 and Th2. So when you have an immune system in balance what happens is that your Th1 system can become over dominant by, based on different triggers which we'll talk about a little bit later or your Th2 system can become dominant. So if your Th1 system becomes dominant, your body is going to go after things that aren't a threat. They're going after your own tissue. That's not going to be a good thing. Or if you have a Th2 dominance, then your body is putting antibody tags on things that it shouldn't. And again, the immune system is going to attack this because it thinks it's, thinks it's bad and it's going to cause that tissue to die and you're going to get symptoms. So for health, we've got to have a balance between Th1 and Th2. There's specific tests that we can do to find out if you have a dominance. And we also can find out if your Th3 three system, which is the support to kind of keep the immune system balanced, is off. And typically in most chronic health patients, we're going to find that it's very weak. And there's different supplements that we can give you to help improve the function of the Th3 to help balance the condition. There are different triggers that will cause the Th1 system to to become dominant, like if you have an infection that your body can't get rid of, your immune system will kind of give up on the infection and will start going after other tissue. You may have a fungus in your body, you may have parasites, and also food sensitivities will also cause that system to become dominant. If you have a Th2 dominance, that can be caused by a chronic blood sugar problem, adrenal problem, and also leaky gut. That's a very important thing to address. And in fact, there is research that shows that in order for you to have an autoimmune condition, you have to have a leaky gut. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about leaky gut. Leaky gut occurs when the lining in your intestine is breached to the point where undigested food particles are actually passing through the intestinal membrane um, and they go basically into your body. And because those food products aren't fully digested, your body actually recognizes them as an invader and it's going to flare up your immune system, your immune system is going to attack that, it's going to make your immune system overactive, and it's also going to create a lot of inflammation in your body. So the leaky gut is a real important thing. Everyone who has autoimmune condition has this to one degree or the other, and our goal is to um, address the things that caused it in the first place, like you may have high cortisol actually thins the membranes of the intestinal tract, so we have to test for that. You also may have had gut infections and we have to look at that to, because that may be the reason why the berry has been breached. You may have food allergies. All these different things can, can make that membrane more porous and then once those things, if they're there, once we address those, then there will be nutritional supplements that will give you to actually heal the lining and that will really help to calm down the immune system. Now, there's a huge com connection between your gut and your brain. Your brain has a barrier called the blood-brain barrier that keeps bad things out of it. However, when you have immune inflammation in your gut, there are different particles that will actually cross the blood-brain barrier and then as a result of that, that's going to cause inflammation in the brain. So if you have an inflamed gut, you're going to have an inflamed brain. If you have an inflamed brain, you're going to have cognitive issues, you may have depression, you may have anxiety, you may have poor focus, you may have short-term memory issues. So the gut-brain, brain-gut, connection is very important. It's, we have to address both in the office to get you better. Now we mentioned about the importance of the gut. There's specific stool-based tests that we have to do to find out if you have these infective organisms. There's a company that we use called Metametrics. In my opinion, the best company have the most accurate testing. When we run these tests, a lot of people come back. We find out parasites on a lot of 
patients, we find abnormal bacteria, yeast, and these things have to be addressed. If you don't address them, there's just no chance you're going to get better. Products that we need to give you to help modulate your immune system or to help boost the T3 system, which is usually weak on most patients. When you have chronic illness and chronic inflammation, your body is going to use up a product in your body called, that it makes called glutathione. You may have heard of that. Glutathione is the most important and most powerful antioxidant that your body makes internally. But when you have chronic illness, typically it's all used up and you don't have enough. So we have to give you glutathione to help boost that system so that you can calm the inflammation down, calm the immune system down. Now the trouble with taking glutathione orally is it's ver absorbed very poorly. So we have to give you a transdermal uh, cream that you can rub in into the different areas of your skin. It'll go right into the blood system and that'll give you the glutathione that you need to calm that inflammation down. Now there's another system that has a big effect on the immune system called the nitric oxide system. And that system also needs balancing. There's a product that we give our patients called Nitric Balance that will help, again, modulate the immune system, help improve the T3 function, which again, which modulates TH, Th1 and Th2. So those products are very important. Also vitamin D and essential fatty acids, also very important to help modulate the immune system. So we have to test for deficiencies in those. It's very common for people to have vitamin D deficiencies, especially here in the Northwest where we don't get a lot of sun. So the question is, are there alternatives to steroids and immunosuppressant drugs? The answer is yes. Steroids are commonly used in medical practice for decreasing inflammation and suppressing the immune system, but the trouble is, is that you can't be on steroids for very long and the medical profession knows that because it causes organ atrophy and it also causes bone loss. Immunosuppressant drugs may improve symptoms, however, if, you may, if your immune system is basically turned off, you may get an infection that you can't get rid of, which is going to become a real problem. Also, your immune system is responsible for killing abnormal cells that your body makes constantly. And if your immune system is weak, it may not be able to address those uh, abnormal cells, and then you're actually increasing your risk for cancer. So it's really important to look at alternative therapies to get your body working the way it's supposed to and not be so dependent upon um, medications which have a lot of side effects. So the things that we have to do to get your immune system in balance is the number one thing we have to do is we have to fix the gut. We talked about the testing that we need to do to find out what's going on, the food allergies, the infections, and then also heal the, the lining for the leaky gut. And then there's a product that we're going to put you on called Repairvite which will actually heal the lining of the gut. And then what we've got to do is we've got to balance the immune system by testing and finding out if there's a dominance. And if there's a dominance, we have to support the weak side. And then we also have to give you things to improve the T3 function, which helps balance TH1 and TH2, like vitamin D, essential fatty acids, like we talked about, glutathione and nitric oxide, addressing the nitric oxide system. So let's talk a bit more about metabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism is basically your body taking in food and then converting it into energy. Now most people who have chronic illness have no energy. So you're not metabolizing properly. Now the organ in your body that ha has the most metabolic need is the brain. 30% of the metabolism of the body, the brain needs that to function. The brain needs a lot of energy to, to work properly. So if you have a metabolism problem, you have a brain problem. So there's a huge connection between the brain and the body because the brain and the nervous system runs the body. And the body also influences how the brain functions. In a little bit. The back part of your brain is the cerebellum. The cerebellum controls balance, coordinated movements, and the tone of the spinal muscles. The cortex controls your, there's different lobes of the brain, your frontal lobe, is involved with your moods. Also, it has a big effect on movement. It's the motor cortex of the body. Your temporal and your parietal lobes have a lot to do with hearing and sensory input. And your occipital lobe has to do with vision. So when we have brain problems, we get a decreased firing of different neurons in the brain. So it's not a disease, it's a functional loss. And when the brain becomes sluggish, what happens is, is that it doesn't drive the organ systems properly. So when the organ systems aren't being driven properly, you end up with organ problems. 
So organ problems and metabolic problems can cause brain problems. Brain problems can cause organ problems. So there's kind of a vicious cycle that goes on. So to get you better, we have to not only address the metabolism in the body, but we have to also address what drives it, which is the brain. And we work on both of those symptoms, we're going to have fantastic results with your condition. So brain imbalances can cause a lot of different symptoms. They can set you up for chronic pain, chronic fatigue, migraine headaches, you may be light sensitive, they can blur your vision, they can actually cause you to have increased sweating. You may have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep when your sympathetic nervous system gets wound up. When you have brain imbalances, there's nothing to cause any breaks on your sympathetic nervous system. You go into what's called a fight or flight response. It's going to cause your blood pressure to go up, your pulse to go up. You may have get racing heart, uh, sweating, and you're also going to be prone to anxiety. And also, because the brain drives the bowels, you may end up with irritable bowel syndrome. If, if part of the brain isn't driving the bowels, you may get sluggish bowels, constipation. We mentioned high blood pressure, and you may get kind of like this fog where you can't think clear, you can't focus, you can't remember things. So all these symptoms can occur because of brain imbalances. And in our practice, we deal with those. There's different therapies that we can use to help rehabilitate brain function. Those therapies are non-invasive and they're all natural and they, they work amazingly well. So the brain needs two main things to function. It needs oxygen and it also needs glucose. Glucose is very important for brain function because it's the fuel to the brain. So if we have blood sugar problems, then that's a big detriment to proper brain function. When you have blood sugar problems, you may have low blood sugar, which is called hypoglycemia, or you may have high blood sugar. Now, the extreme of high blood sugar is diabetes, and some people have that, but a lot of people have what we call insulin resistance, which is pre-diabetes, and as a result, the mixture of blood sugar is too rich. So if the mixture of the blood sugar is too rich or too weak, then the neurons aren't getting the fuel they need to function. That's going to put stress on the brain. So it's very important that we address blood, blood sugar as far as addressing one of our metabolic concerns, but we also want to do things neurologically to help those neurons function better. So one of the therapies that we use to help rehabilitate and get those neurons firing better is what we call oxygen therapy with exercise. So we have our patients exercise in our office under the influence of oxygen. As you get older, your body loses the ability to metabolize oxygen as efficiently as you do when you're younger. And so that's a therapy that really helps overall brain function, especially helps the cerebellum. Your cerebellum is the back part of your brain, and your cerebellum actually needs more oxygen than your heart. So that's a very important therapy that we use. There's also other therapies that we use. A vibration is also an important therapy. When you put vibration up close to the brain, it stimulates the neurons. Those neurons, as they're stimulated, are going to increase their ability to fire those messages that communicate in the brain. That's an important therapy. We also use things like auditory stimulation, visual and olfactory stimulation, again, to get the neurons working better, to have them fire better. Um, and also we use something called a caloric, which is what we do is we put warm water up against the eardrum. There's a nerve behind your eardrum that when that nerve gets stimulated, it fires very powerfully into your cerebellum and also into the opposite brain. And that's a very powerful therapy, especially for people who have chronic pain and also who are dizziness. It works quite well. And we also use um, non-surgical spinal decompression in our office. A lot of people come to us have like chronic back pain, so that's a special kind of table. It helps to stretch out the spine. It's real helpful for disc herniations. So once we run all the tests and get those tests back, and also when we have done our neurological exam, we're going to put all those different issues that we find all together, and we're going to start working on those very aggressively. We're going to work with you metabolically and also neurologically. And that's what makes us unique. And that's why people who see us, who have been to lots of other doctors, often find that they get better, often very quickly, because we have special training and these special therapies that most other doctors haven't been trained on. So if you have a chronic condition, there's some important questions that I'd like you to ask yourself. I want you to ask yourself, how has your condition affected your job? How has it affected your relationships, your finances, or your other family activities? Are there things that you can't do anymore, the things that you've given up on because you don't have the health to do them, that you really miss? What does it cost you in time 
in money? What have you already spent on your health with very little to show for it? How has it affected your outlook on the future? And how is it affecting your sleep? And where do you pick yourself in the next three to five years if your condition is not corrected? And what would it be worth to you if we can improve your condition? These are questions that I can't answer, only you can answer, but what I can tell you is that we have cutting edge techniques in our office that have consistently helped our patients when no other doctors have been helped. Our metabolic and neurological protocols are part of a bigger um, system called brain-based therapy. There are over 450 doctors throughout the United States that have success with many chronic conditions including autoimmune disorders, um, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, uh, peripheral neuropathies, many conditions that medical profession doesn't have a real good track record at helping. So go back to life-changing care. You can look at some of those testimonials and it'll help give you some hope that if 1,200 people who were told they can't get better got better, then we'll be able to help you too. Now, we have a special offer that we're extending to anyone who gets this DVD. If you are sincerely open to learning more about what can, can be done about your condition and you're committed to getting better, then we're going to invite you into our office for two free visits. In those two free visits, we're going to do a neurological exam and we're going to have you fill out a lot of paperwork that will let me know what metabolic problems you may be having. And then we're going to sit down on a follow-up visit and we're going to talk about what we found and based on the paperwork, what metabolic tests that we need to order. And then we're going to set up um, a map or a, uh, a treatment plan to help get you better. And we're going to actually extend that to you at no charge. And that's just our way of um, extending this offer for better health to those people who have just been suffering. It really um, bothers me to see people who are really missing out on life and when they don't have to. So if you're really serious about getting better, give us our office a call at 425-821-1101. I look forward to meeting with you and helping you enjoy a better life.